What's up everyone? I'm Jeff Teague. This is Auto Jeff Reviews. We got a battle on our hands because we've got Old Reliable, the champion, against the new kid on the block. Who's hanging tough? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hanging tough. We've got RAV4 Hybrid, Kia Sportage Hybrid. Who wins? Our first competitor, 2023 Kia Sportage Hybrid EX. This is in Vesta Blue against 2022 RAV4 Hybrid XLE in Magnetic Gray. Over the course of this video, I'm gonna show you several different factors, components, so that you can make the best decision. These are gonna be two very popular hybrid, smaller SUVs. We're gonna figure out for you which one's the best. And then let's talk about why this one isn't anywhere close to a fair fight. This one, 2023, RAV4 2022. The 23 is not out yet. RAV4 Hybrid is established. This is the first year for Kia Sportage Hybrid, and it's exciting. This one, it's stylish. It's got the technology. It's a great value. I can't wait to see how it stacks up against RAV4. Housekeeping, for 2023 RAV4, you'll see interior that will not be the same for 2023 because they're adding the new Toyota Audio Multimedia System. There will be large multimedia touchscreens up to 10.5 inches, multi-information displays behind the steering wheel up to 12.3 inches. We'll have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, things like that. Let's do a walk around so that we can see what each of them looks like on the outside. This will be our first look, and then we're gonna get a first look on the inside, and then we'll compare section by section. Whose front end looks better? Who has a better rear end? Who has better interior styling? And then this one here, I've been evaluating it for several days. Thanks to Kia USA, I really appreciate that. I'm in love with this car. It's really nice. And I can't wait to show you about it. For 2023, Kia Sportage Hybrid will have three different trim levels. RAV4 Hybrid will have seven different trim levels. So how do we decide? Well, these two are comparable in price. They're comparable, as they say, but each one's right around 31,000. This one's just a hair bit under. This one's just a hair bit over. Each one has a package that adds in the power liftgate and power moonroof. That's about $1,200. This one adds in for $1,500 panoramic moonroof and the hands-free smart power liftgate. Let's get our first look at RAV4 Hybrid. This is the XLE. We've got nice contrast in colors. We have a seven inch raised multimedia touchscreen, 4.2 inch multi-information display different drive modes, including trail mode. These seats are gonna be sport fabric seats. You can upgrade to the XLE Premium, which will be around, I believe, 33,000, and get the Softex seating, the synthetic leather seating. Very comfortable. This one has good leg room, head room, shoulder room. And then we'll look here. Yes, Sportage Hybrid, we're getting ready to see you next. Got your view on this one? Let's go inside this one here. What are your first impressions? It's got blue interior with like an ash light gray, matching 12.3 inch multimedia and multi-information displays. See the shifter certainly looks unique. This has the synthetic leather seats as well. Very comfortable seats. Okay, the back seat now, just like RAV4. This one here, Kia bills this as the best rear seat legroom in its class. Over 41 inches of rear seat legroom. They also say it has the best cargo space in its class. We'll compare both of those, see what you guys think. And then what's your impression looking from the back? Let's go. Let's start by talking about engine performance. What makes each one of these things tick? Engine performances for each of these vehicles, totally different philosophies. Let's see how it stacks up. This one here is the RAV4. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine with electric power, has an ECVT, electronically controlled CVT transmission. 
219 total hybrid horsepower. Kia Sportage Hybrid is completely different. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. What? And then it works with a six speed automatic transmission. This is 227 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. The front ends couldn't be any more similar and any more completely different. Most RAV4 trim levels updated their headlight design and their wheel design for 2022. This one here utilizes the traditional trapezoidal front grille, a little bit of three dimensional going on here. Of course, we have the Toyota badge in blue signifying hybrid. How does this look? Has LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, just in a different philosophical design than Kia. Kia went all in on this round. Let's look here. We're gonna compare it. This is what Kia calls the boomerang daytime running lights. They don't really strobe like that. That's just the camera angle. But look at the headlight design and then look at this gloss black three-dimensional. It's got the new Kia badge on it. Silver accents going on. So let's compare the two together. Ooh, which one is your favorite? It's like Sha Na Na said in Greece, how low can you go? How low can you go? Ground clearance, 8.1 inches on this RAV4 Hybrid XLE, 8.3 inches on the Kia Sportage Hybrid EX. It's time to compare side profiles. Let's just imagine for a second, we're on a dating app and you're scrolling through and you see these smaller SUV type vehicles, and you're like, which one do I swipe? So let's see it in the comment section. Which side profile are you swiping for? Sportage Hybrid has a wild design. It's classic, but yet it's modern. It's aerodynamic. Got these cool gloss black roof rails, fuel tank right here. Two different ways to get fuel mileage. You're gonna average 38 or 43. I'll tell you how in a minute. Then we've got these tail lights that sweep over, 18 inch wheels. This has auto unlock, but it's not the touch sensor like a RAV4 has. You have to push that button. It has blind spot monitor. It has turn signal indicator. Nice cutout right here. Nice cutout. And then here we go. When RAV4 was redesigned, it has the tall, sturdy, rugged appearance. So we're going to go that route here. Take a look at these headlights that sweep on over 17 inch alloy wheels. They're not two tone like the Kia has turn signal indicators, blind spot monitor, smaller cutout, but it still has a cutout right here by the A pillar. This one has the touch sensor, so you can just put your hand on the handle, beep, beep. It has black roof rails, black accent that sweeps down here. What do you think? This is gonna be our close up view as we go all the way down so you can get an impression. I'd love to see your comments. Two tone, 18 inch wheels, silver accent down below, turn signal. See that big cutout there? This has a red triangular shaped blind spot indicator. Roof rails, that's the pano. What are we thinking right now? What are we thinking? And then we're comparing to RAV4. See those 17 inch wheels. Do you have an impression on which one you like better? We'll look up here, no panoramic roof, chrome accents, turn signal indicator. And then we have the two vehicles, the classic two vehicles. That's in an amber orange color. Here's the window cutout right there. Different cladding on the bottom, no silver accent. All right. How are you gonna decide I need some help, folks. Leave a comment. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Those other brothers can't deny. If we had two artists, two different canvases, we would have two completely different finished paintings, right? We're gonna let the new kid go first here. I love the use of gloss black as it sweeps across here. And we've got this little pattern similar to that, a little different. You'll see that on the Kia Carnival as well. So, what do you think about the back end of this one here? HEV, hybrid electric vehicle. If it was PHEV, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. We've got silver accents down below. A lot of similar features that kind of 
complete the whole thing as you go around. I see parking sensors in the back. That's really cool. And I appreciate the fact that it's on this vehicle here. All right. And then RAV4, you've got such a nice back end. How's that for a car pickup line? Look at this black, gloss black comes to a point here. It's just so traditional, but it's so tough and rugged as well. Really interesting. Not as much intricate design work as the Sportage has. It has two different chrome pipes. You won't see any of that on this one. So who do you like better? Who's gonna get their feelings hurt when they don't get that final rose? Kia, Toyota, this is the final rose. For one of you, you'll be moving forward. For the other, your journey ends today. I would assume that the most important criteria is gonna be whose power back door raises faster. I haven't tried this side by side. This could be kind of cool. All right, for cargo space, this plane, There he is. For cargo spaces, similar, Kia has more. Let's determine if it's enough that's important to you. This one has 37.5 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats. I see a storage pocket. I see a 12 volt circular, a light there. We've got some tie downs. That's very cool. And then you get just under 70 cubic feet when the seats are folded flat. Let's look underneath here. We've got grooves, but we can do a trick with that one. Can the Kia do that though? In fact, the Kia can do that. We've got levers. I bet I can pull those seats forward, pop them right forward by pulling those levers. 12 volt circular. We've got our light here. Got some hook tie downs. Just a different philosophy than Rav. If this says pull, I'm pulling. Oh, we do have grooves. Look at that. Pull that. The grooves go deeper though. And storage. And storage just like Rav has. Rav4 can open it up. By you can turn it over. We can put it in the groove here. So now we've got room that we can stack on up stack them up with this criteria kia is going to say hold my beer so we can pop this one down into the lower groove and it opens up even more room 39.5 cubic feet of space and i almost forgot this is what the other side looks like for the kia with the kia pull those levers they come tumbling down Here's how it sits. RAV4 is slightly different. You pull those levers. You can do it from either side. So when you pull those levers, this is how that one sits. Let's test out the Sportage horn. Let's test out the RAV4 horn. All right, so which one has the best horn? Hopefully you won't have to use it ever in traffic because everybody drives on their best behavior when they're around RAV4 and Sportage, right? Who has the better horn? Let's take a look at the back seat here. This has 37.8 inches of rear seat legroom. I've got this seat set for somebody five foot eight here, and I've got this seat leaned back like a selfish passenger all the way back to make it tougher on RAV4. RAV4 has good headroom, shoulder room. It's a tall vehicle. Leg room, 37.8 inches, right? How does that fit in the real world? Well, here we are. This is all the way back and reclined. Still got good knee room. My feet kind of touch right here. My ankles kind of touch, but it's still good. Headroom, I'm good, five foot eight. No problem there. The seats are very comfortable. This one's like a bouncy plush seat, woo! All right. Then we got a little hump here to straddle. And this, we have a tremendous amount of leg room because it's set for somebody five foot eight. And this is the Kia. Completely different. I love this garment hook right here or activity bag hook. But look, this is with the seat all the way back. This has more leg room, a lot more leg room, 41.3 inches of rear seat leg room. How does it fit? 
in the real world. Plain. This one here has a little bit more room for my ankles. It's a little tight, but it's all the way back. There's a big sliding range here. Seats are very comfortable. I love this synthetic leather on this one. It's got a hump also, so I'm gonna straddle there. Buffalo Bill likes that. All right, we got this right here. And then this, it's cavernous. It's huge. Lots and lots of leg room here. And this is the clear advantage for this one. Best in class. Back in the RAV4, I like this headrest. It's a nice wide one. Good arm space. Deep cup holders, a little bit wider. I like that. And then I like the use of the silver metallic. One pocket, not two. It's got rear air vents. Notice these versus the Kia size. We've got two different USBs right there. This one has a total of five in it. Soft touch. And the Kia, this one also has a nice, wide, comfortable holder here. These are a little bit thin. I could see those metallic sport bottles working there. They both have child latches. This is just genius here. Looks funky. But boy, is that effective. Two pockets on this one. Look, USB in the side of the seat and the side of the seat. Good engineering. Huge rear air vents and a storage pocket. We've got hooks, captain hooks. All right, which one are you liking? RAV4 front seats. And this is where I said it's not gonna be a fair fight because this is a 22. The 23 is going to have the upgraded Toyota audio multimedia system. That's a seven inch raised screen. It'll have the 10 and a half inch screen on certain trim levels or eight inches, 4.2 inch. That could go all the way up to 12.3 inch display. So look at the steering wheel now. It's not leather wrapped. It has dual temperature controls. I like that. Nice chunky buttons. That's good. Power push button start. It's got USB, 12 volt circular, and then it has different driving modes. It's got trail mode, eco, sport, normal, EV for electric driving, electric parking brake, electronic parking brake, and brake hold. All right, so let's go in here. Deep cup holders. The Kia system's really cool. I'll show you that next. All right, and we got two USBs. So we got five total. USBs here. How do you like the seats? How you like me now? How you like me now? This is not a power operated passenger seat. And from the driver's side, got a moonroof there. Easy to use controls for lumbar support, twist, pull, move up, move down, move forward. Look at the silver accents here. Got that soft touch armrest a pocket. We've got power lift gate. Trying to look at everything that we can see. Right now that's a seven inch screen, but you can upgrade to nine inch screen. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, but it will have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. I'm just trying to be fair to the RAV4 side of things. Got auto dimming rear view mirror, safety connect, sunglass holder got lighted mirrors with sliders this way and on this screen here we can see different pieces of information just like we'll see on the kia see that that's a all-wheel drive system that's an on-demand all-wheel drive gives you the most power possible all of your safety features. I'll show the blind spot. There it is. And then we can go down here. It has right now Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, but it will have 2.5 plus. We'll look inside the passenger side. Really interesting use of gloss black, blues, light grays. It's funny here. My whole goal was to be unbiased, but also show things I'm excited about or interested about. 
This one has a lot of them. RAV4 has a lot of them. Which ones are more important to you? These seats are so comfortable. All right, now look at this here. We can actually shut this and you can put a an iPad, lay an iPad right there or use for cup holders. We've got heated seats, wireless charging, USBs. That's cool. Then we've got a knob, a dial to get us to reverse neutral drive and then different drive modes. You can do eco, snow, smart, and sport. And inside the console, nothing to plug in here, nice and deep. Let's check out the driver's side of our friend Kia here. Soft touch, good use of different colors. Love the gloss black because it's subtle, but boy is it there. Has a leather wrapped steering wheel. That new Kia steering wheel. Controls are pretty easy to figure out. And then of course we see our big toys behind the matching 12.3 inch screens. That's nearly 25 inches of digital information space. Lumbar support, twist, pull, up, down, back hatch, electronic parking brake. Where's the brake hold? Well, it's right down here. There we go. Come on, let's get into focus. There we go, focus. On the information screen, this one's more high tech and it gives more information than RAV4, but is that important to you? You'll have to be the judge of that yourself. Okay, let's go to the next filing cabinet. Next filing cabinet has that all wheel drive with the center locking differential. I like that it tells me when I need to take a break. RAV4 does that as well. All right, so we've got that. Now let's go to this right here. This is interesting because we do have knobs just like the RAV4 has, but so we don't have two rows of this. You can swap between what we have now, the air, and then we've got navigation and your multimedia. You just switch. So what's this? This is the radio volume and radio tuning. What's this? Now it's the temperature controls. And then on here, we've got navigation system. We've got all sorts of information that we can show on this screen. That's cool. It'll be interesting to see how the new Toyota Audio Multimedia looks when it's with the RAV4 for 2023. And then the radio control here. She's a brick house. You can flip between Sirius XM, FM, AM, Bluetooth, however you wanna do it. We can check our hybrid right here, energy flow going on. It tells us when we're using different parts of the vehicle, all sorts of stuff. So you wanna know which multimedia I like better? That would be the Kia, pretty obvious answer. Let's compare window stickers here. Kia Sportage Hybrid, the EX. Remember you can get LX or SX Prestige. Vesta Blue. Now this one here shows what's standard on all Kia Sportage hybrids. And then the red column over on the right side, we upgrade to the EX. So everything that's on the left side gets added to what's new on the right side. So take a look here, the all wheel drive with center locking differential. That's important when you're doing any type of driving where there could be slippage or obstacles. Look at the great safety features right here. We're gonna see Excellent safety features on RAV4 as well. Here we go. Normally it's an eight inch audio, but we can upgrade to the big one, the 12.3. Just stop the video anytime you want to. Of course, the warranty is different here. Got that Kia warranty that we all know. 17 inch alloy wheels is standard on the LX, but we're upgrading to the 18 inch machine finish alloy wheels. All that stuff gets added standard when we get the EX. Now here we've got this EX premium package, panel roof, LED interior lighting, the smart hands-free power lift gate, and dual illuminated vanity mirrors. What about pricing? Well, we're going to go over here, $30,990. And when we get delivery added to it, that package, $33,860. Fuel mileage, 
You can combine for a 43 if you want to. You go with the LX, front wheel drive. That's 44 and 42 and 43 combined. But we got 38, 38, 38. And the safety ratings are not out yet on this particular one, so we don't have a good comparison. And here we go with the RAV4 sticker. With this one, I could have gone with XLE or XLE Premium to get that Softex interior. Hybrid XLE. Here are the safety ratings. Here's the fuel mileage combined for 40, 41, and 38. This is going to be standard on the XLE. They just do it a little bit differently. Electronic on-demand all-wheel drive. No center locking differential. Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. But we are upgrading. Just stop the video anytime you want to see something more in depth. This one starts right about the same price, 31045 It's just on the opposite end of 31 Has that convenience package, power liftgate, power moonroof, not hands-free. Here we go, delivery. Total, this one has a few options on this individual one. So we have to kind of take that into account. So eliminate those if you don't want those. 34.8, if you took all those options off, it would be under 34. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I did some heavy lifting today. I'd love it if you did a little bit and just left a comment in the comment section. Tell me which one your ultimate winner is. What stood out to you? Was it something little like the horn sound? Was it the multimedia? Was it the styling? Was it RAV4 tried and true and tested? Was it the new kid on the block coming in strong? My job is to just show you the facts, tell you some things I think are interesting about each vehicle and let you make the decision. Please hit subscribe if you're joining my channel for the first time. If you're returning, thanks for being here. Plain, my Instagram and TikTok are similar, just 60 seconds or less videos and pictures. That's it, Auto Jeff Reviews, Instagram, TikTok. Thanks everybody. Peace to the world. See you next time.